All right. Hello, hello. I think we're live. Can you guys hear me? Hey, Akimon Led. How's it going? Welcome to the stream. I'm just finishing a bit of a setup here. Hey, Trouble. How's it going? Uh, there's a bit of a delay, but it's all good. It's not too much. Uh, I've been having some problems with my internet being very slow, so hopefully it's not gonna play on me today. All right, just uh, a couple more things. Need to set up my Epic Pen just in case I need to write down something on top of this screen. Um, cool. All right. I think we are ready to to get started. I just wanted to show you something before we actually start um, that we did in the previous stream. Uh, let's have a look. So here is the Zero Central page. Hey Rodolfo, how you doing? Serkan, Serkan. Um, yeah, I just wanted to see. This is what I mean about my internet not being very, very good. So if there is an issue with the stream, I apologize in advance. But um, I posted this. I don't know why it's showing the the video first, but should pick up this image. Um, here's the the final render of the Japanese macaque, the monkey, the snow monkey. Uh, this is something that we did in the past two streams. So if you wanna have a look at it, uh, I mean the process, feel free to watch the past two streams. So the one from last week and the previous week. Those those two are about the modeling and and the setup of fiber mesh of this little monkey, uh, which I think it just came up uh, pretty good. It's a it's a real time. Uh, real-time setup so everything is done in ZBrush from you know from the from the model itself all the way to the these little particles of snow um, that's fairly simple I do mention how to do those particles in the previous streams but um, uh, it's something that I did uh, like kind of like off-camera but it's, it's it's fairly simple it's just nano mesh uh, with a uh, with an alpha or with an image that has an alpha or an image that has a black background so ZBrush uses as as an alpha, and then I just import it into um, into Marmoset, and um, that's where you get all these, you know, kind of like blurriness effects and this, um, yeah, out of focus. Uh, yeah, so this is the the final render. I think it looks quite quite cool. Um, this is the this is where we end up in the last stream, um, and this is just to show you that is is basically a very simple model, which is in reality just the head, and and then a bunch of cards for the for the low poly kind of like uh, fair. Uh, the only reason I'm, I'm mentioning this, aside from the fact that um, I haven't shown you the, the final result, is because uh, if you go, all, here's a, by the way, <laughs> here's a, a little indication of the extra features in ZBrush that I use, fiber mesh, nano mesh, noise maker for the, kind of like the water. Um, and here's, you can you can catch up with the, the previous ones. But the only reason I mention this is because if you go down the bottom here, and if you just go to the Zbrush Guides resource page, I published yesterday uh, a little set, a little pack of uh, fibers that it's, it comes with the fiber mesh ready settings. So here, I, mean, I just don't want to cover it with the with the camera. I'll just put it there. Um, so yeah, if you go to the zbrushguides.com slash zbrush miscellaneous or just go to the resources and click on zbrush miscellaneous, um, you have a bunch of stuff that you've probably seen already, but the new one is here, the Japanese Makaki Fair. So this one comes with three fiber mesh settings for kind of like a, a base set of fibers. Um, what is the other one? The clumps, so like a, another setting for creating like kind of like clumps, and another one just for like flyaways or extra bits of fur. So you can click on this one and it'll just start downloading it. Uh, it's a zip file, and it also comes with um, you know, like the same 
it comes with the, the settings and then depending on the setting that you use, it also comes with four maps. So the color, the normal, color normal, ambient occlusion and and depth or, or height map. So basically you can just do all the setup and just follow these these two like I did here uh, in in ZBrush and then you can export it into Marmoset and then you can use the the maps that I provided with this inside this little pack uh, to connect everything and use normal maps and, and just create more detail inside a real-time render. It doesn't have to be Marmoset just um, anyway I just wanted to show you that so that you can you're aware that is there. It's just a, a nice little resource. They're not the same. Uh, they're similar settings, but they're not the same as the one that I use in the stream. I just spent a little bit more time making it uh, a bit more, you know, thorough, <laughs> thoroughly uh, produced. All right. So, what are we gonna do today? Um, I don't really have an, <laughs> an idea. We we've been doing like a bunch of different stuff in the previous streams. So. Feel free to ask anything uh, along the way. I think I'm just going to wing it and try to uh, do something different that I haven't done for a while. Uh, maybe uh, I have some, some references from some rocks, so I was just trying to do some something different. But uh, what I think I'm going to do is some kind of uh, setup for, a, for an environment. Because uh, again, that's something that I haven't done for a while. And yeah, so I'll, I'll do kind of like an environment setup. Hopefully we get to block everything today or at least create all the assets and maybe in the next stream we put it all together uh, but it's just so that you know it the idea would be to create kind of the the base geometry and set on details or set on level of details to then produce a concept uh, that I can take into Keyshot using the series to Keyshot bridge and, and produce a series of images and maybe do a paint over um, and that generally uh, what that's one of the workflows that I really enjoy doing is just setting up things to a certain point, a certain degree, and then take everything into Photoshop or Krita or some, something like that and just, uh, you know, add more details with textures and painting um, and that sort of stuff, th that sort of thing. But uh, yeah, I don't have anything, I don't have a, a concept like, like I did in the previous streams. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. And if you have any questions along the way or if you want to clarify any of the techniques that I'm going to be using, feel free to put them in the chat. Hopefully, hopefully I'll get to see the chat. Um, by the way, let me know if you guys can see the chat on the screen or if it is annoying because if you cannot see the questions in the chat itself, like over the screen on top of me, <laughs> then I will just turn it off because, you know, it's, it's some screen real estate that I could be using and if it's not working, then might as well just get rid of it. All right. Oh, by the way, um, this is going to be the next. I mean, for the for for this month for August, this is going to be the new um, the new schedule. So it's going to be on this time at this day for the next few streams. Uh, Sean, have you ever made a tutorial going over the trail modifiers? I watched the double action brushes part two and you said you might at some point. Um, I think I think no, I haven't I haven't done a, a like dedicated tutorial about the trail modifiers just because it's it's such a specific thing from a specific series of modifiers that I don't know if it warrants an entire tutorial um, but it's 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 relatively simple. All, all you need to understand about the trails is, is just um, it's kind of like a, like a duplication, like a real-time duplication of the instance of the brush. I don't know if that makes sense, but it basically takes the, the stroke that you're doing or the brush, the, the point, the, the tip of your brush, and it basically multiplies that along the stroke. So if you have a, uh, maybe I can just show you real quickly. Like I said, it doesn't. I don't think it requires an entire tutorial. There are a few things that you can do and how you can mix them up with other modifiers. So that might be a good um, a good opportunity for a tutorial, but not not just about the trail. So if I take the standard brush, let's just go ahead and clone it so I don't mess with the original, and let's go ahead and subdivide this a few times. Right. So I can take this is standard brush, and this is obviously. 
the effect of the brush. You know, pretty pretty basic stuff. And if you, by the way, if you guys don't know what what the trails are, what Sean is referring to. So if you go to the brush palette, there's one thing here called the modifiers, one well, sub palette called modifiers, and then there is these trails, right? So right now this one is set to one. So if you hold control, right, it tells you a little description of what this is. So the slider will apply multiple brushes at once along the stroke of the surface. So that is it's probably a better explanation than what I just said about multiplying the instances, but that's really what it is. So if I take this to, let's say, 10 and do the same thing, right? I'm applying the same pressure, um, but Zeroch is taking this and multiplying the effect, right? It's uh, it's a bit hard to see, but there is there's a significant difference. So trails are fantastic to, to create a more, I mean, if you combine trails with lazy mouse, you get a very controlled set of, um, set of brush strokes, right? If you don't, if you turn off a uh, lazy mouse, then it's gonna be really, really obvious the effect of the, of the ex extra trails. So that, for example, is one of the things that I use in a custom brush that I have uh, called the, the PM Extra Standard. So I have 16 trails intensity of 0.4. So you see with this brush, I have a lot of control. I also have a, a pretty big, um, a pretty large number here in the, the lazy radius. So it's kind of like, um, you know, I use this quite a bit. It's, it's almost like an in-between, an inverted dam standard brush and a standard, um, standard brush that has trails. So it just gives me a lot of control in my strokes to create these this sort of details. Um, Anyway, hopefully that gives you an idea. Um, just turn this off. And let's go ahead and start with the, the environment. Again, um, hopefully I'll, I'll show you some cool different techniques along the way, but um, let's start with, with the simple stuff. Let's start by setting it up. So I'm just gonna select a move brush. Um, I, I would just Google GL orientation and position a bit tricky to figure out. Ah, the global orientation? Not sure what you mean. Um, hey, Ms. Wildfire. How's everyone going? Cool. Alrighty, so uh, I'm going to start with the base, and this is something that I do for this type of project, like uh, that I know I'm, I'm going to end up doing kind of like a, a paint over on top or, or just a sketch or concept is to set up the base in a radial fashion. And I'll show you why and what I mean by that. So I'm gonna select a cylinder, right? And I'm just gonna click make polymesh 3D, doesn't matter what it is. And I'm just gonna turn off perspective as well. And I'm gonna get rid of all of the geometry except one of the faces at the top. So hold Control and Shift and then Alt without releasing the click to hide everything but this this mesh. I'm also turning double so I can see it underneath. And yeah, so let's go ahead and delete that. So delete hidden, right? And now I have just this, this plane. So this is gonna be the base of my entire environment. So I'm gonna center this gizmo and I'm just gonna scale this up. I'm gonna turn on floor just so I can see, have a reference of the scale a little bit. We can change this later on, but you know, just to have an idea. So this is gonna be the floor or like the yeah, the terrain of of my of my environment. And the reason I make it into a circular fashion this way is because I'm gonna be able to the idea is that for example in Keyshot or even if you do it in, in ZBrush, the idea is that you can rotate the camera around in different ways. And that way you can find something that, you know, works a little bit better. And you don't have like, if you, if you were to do it in a plane, then you'll have the corners every now and again, or in the distance, you'll see a little bit of the corner of the plane. Whereas with a circle or yeah, just a plane that is circular, it's, um, it's more manageable to, to find different angles. So that is really the idea. Hey, Winston, how's it going? Good to have you here. And um, yeah, so, one thing we can do is just do a quick retop of this um, because again, if you start adding cuts around it, it might just um, 
you know, you might have a lot of geometry here, which in some cases that might be useful. So let's go ahead and just do a quick zero mesh. Um, obviously, this creates this weird geometry here. Uh, I'm going to undo that and I'm going to turn on symmetry so we can get something a bit cleaner. There we go. You see that just a, a, that's a, just a simple trick. Um, if you get something in this type of objects that looks a little bit weird, just turn uh, symmetry and then you get something a bit better with the, with the zero measure. And I reckon we can just reduce it a tiny bit more, but because we have quads all the way around, we can just reconstruct subdivision level and maybe just one and delete higher. So I think that's this pretty this is pretty decent. And then I'm just gonna polish by groups so that we can get a, a nice and smooth edge here. And this is going to be the the base of the environment. So let's just do a quick save. And yeah, so we have the the environment base, uh, sorry, the, the ground. Uh, let's go ahead now and start working on maybe, um, um, well, let's, let's create the assets really. So I'm gonna select the, the sphere that I had before, this one right here. Uh, so I'm gonna start creating a rock. So from a single rock, uh, and this is also that something that I like to do is just kind of like prototyping. So from a single rock, we're gonna create a bunch of different variants to populate the the entire environment that we're gonna do. Um, again, this is you know you've you've probably seen a lot of these <laughs> tutorials on the internet on how to make a rock. It's not the most exciting thing, but it's it's enjoyable to to do. So I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> so I'm just starting with a with a sphere. I'm just gonna scale it up, um, and I'm gonna go for a particular type of you know, type of rock. And I'm gonna click on Dynamesh. Uh, this is a pretty high resolution, so I'm just gonna scale it down and redynamesh again. All right. I think that one would work. Cool. Um, hey, Sandros. Winston, loving your extra mile videos. I'm, I'm glad to hear that, man. Um, Winston is is one of my students in the extra mile course. Uh, we're having we're having a lot of fun um, with the process, and some of some of the some of the students are making some awesome some awesome uh, progress on the course. And it's to me, hey man, how you doing? You can go wrong with rocks anatomy. <laughs> that's that's true. <laughs> um, well, actually, you can you can. Uh, sometimes it's just a rock is not just a matter of pushing things all the way around like they, they have certain structure and I'll try to tackle those those things right so I'm gonna select a material that has a bit more specular just so that we can see more of the of the cuts um, I have a material that is uh, you can get it from the Seabridge Guides website it's um, it's kind of like a, a gray matcap but it also has a tiny bit of of border like a comic so if I go with the and let's go ahead and do down standard brush and I do this well it's not very visible here but it's not very sharp so you get this type of like outline it's not very visible so it doesn't matter <laughs> I just want something more specular so that I can see what to do so I'm gonna start with the obvious choice which is the clip brush and all I'm going to do make sure the symmetry is off is start clipping some areas like so um, I'm probably gonna override this with some other brushes, but all I'm doing here is let me just do that. I try to find a the the block or the blocking of this of this rock. I mean, if you're going for something stylized, this is already pretty decent in terms of you know of the block out. Right, um, but yeah, all I'm doing here is trying to find some some angles and clipping some some planes, and you'll see that I'm just moving it around so that I can, you know, target all these different areas. And like I said, this is all going to change in in just a second. Um, and I also have some reference on my second monitor, and nothing too fancy. I just Google rocks and rocks formations on um, on Pinterest and and got a pretty decent result. Uh, this is something that I, I'm doing fairly 
fairly often now, I, I just completely stop searching for images in, in Google because <laughs> uh, Pinterest is just the, the algorithm for finding similar images to what you're looking for is absolutely fantastic. So I'm just doing that now. All right, so I just increased the resolution of Dynamesh, maybe a little bit more, right? Just so that we can create a bit more details. Now, I would say, like for me, it is easier to create this type of process uh, because I have a set of brushes that I already uh, created for this, um, but I'm gonna show you the, the way to do it with the standard brushes that come with ZBrush. But just in case you want it, the, there is a, a very simple pack uh, that you can get from the ZBrush Guides website. It's called the Rocks, um, the Advanced Rock Pack. So it comes with all these brushes. So it is just a it's just a faster way, and it just saves you time to try to find you know those, de those details that um, you know you can still do them with the standard brushes. Just um, ultimately, these brushes are just to save you time and, and give you more um, you know intricate patterns and, and, and ways to to create these type of these type of things. But again, I'm going to show you manually how I would approach this. So there is a really cool brush uh, called the Trim Adaptive. Right, so you have the trim dynamic, uh, which you probably have used before. And again, this one is allows you to block some planes really quickly. But the trim adaptive is, is interesting because it kind of like adapts <laughs> to the planes that you start clicking. So it allows you to kind of like break apart this, this rock very nicely. So I'm going to start with that. And in fact, let me just undo that. I'm going to add a square alpha so that the cuts are or the the way that this alpha works it's a little bit more evident so you'll see just with that little thing that gives you a good idea of how this um, this brush works so the idea here is that I'm just gonna target some some areas here at the bottom and I'm going to try to concentrate some of the smaller details at the bottom. But again, I'm not trying to do something. I'm not trying to create a rock that I'm just going to put in the in the environment. I'm going to try to create an asset. And the difference is that when when I'm trying to create something like an asset that I can reuse for prototyping or whatever it is, uh, I'm trying to make something a little bit generic, so that again we can reuse it in in some other parts of of the environment and it's not very obvious that oh, that's the rock that you use. So I'm just trying to concentrate some of these smaller details here at the bottom, but ideally you don't want to create a, a, a very feature-like rock. So in other words, I'm not trying to copy a rock into this model. I'm just creating a rock that you can view from different angles maybe and, and that will give you an idea of, of different details. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, um, it will it will in a second when we get to populate the environment with this asset. And again, if you guys have any questions about any of these techniques, I know they're fairly simple at this point, um, feel free to put them in the chat and I'll get to, to them in, in a second. Every, every time that I take a sip of water, um, I'll look at the chat and see if there's any questions and, and we take it from there. So another thing that I'm trying to do here is break apart some of the the very evident planes that I created with the clip brush. So you see I'm just targeting you know some of the the transitions or the lines dividing those planes just to break them apart a little bit and I'm applying a little bit of pressure. This this brush that I'm using, the adaptive with this alpha, is very strong. So if I put all the pressure in, it's just gonna create this type of stuff. Uh, which sometimes could be good, but I'm just going with subtle, subtle pressures, pressure, <laughs> pressures, subtle pressure. So there you go. Um, another thing you can do with this brush is holding the Alt key, obviously, to invert the how it's how it's adapting or how it's clipping. So instead of pushing in, it's just pushing out the. So um, right now I'm just pressing Alt, so it creates that nice sort of extra volume there. And then with the normal effect, just push it in. All right, so I think this is
this is starting to look decent. Let's just clip here at the top a little bit. I'll take a look at the chat in just a second and we can probably increase the dynamic resolution and start going for something a bit more detailed. And at this point I haven't used the uh, the smooth brush because I, um, I want to keep those very sharp edges. All right, so if you look at this from the distance, you can get a, a little bit of the, the main shapes, but it's starting to look more like a rock. This one is bothering me a, a little bit. It's not too bad. All right, but this is all just with the rock, right? Like, sorry, with the adaptive. I haven't done anything other than a sphere, clip brushes, and then adaptive. So, pretty, pretty cool brush. Like I said, um, some of this stuff in the pack that I that I have for the for the rocks are kind of like more automated. So it just allows you to work faster. But there's nothing that you cannot do um, with a little bit of more time and and getting to know the brushes. Okay. Let's just um, leave it there for a second. And if you have questions, I'm happy to answer them. Um, cool, all good. All right, so the next thing I probably wanna do is make some, some major cuts and some major, um, how would you say it, maybe yeah, where the, where the rock is sort of like breaking or points of tension in the rock. Um, and I have to be careful with that just because making those indentations will make them very kind of like feature and it's very easy to recognize the patterns. So uh, I will have to go with the flow that I'm sort of establishing here. So I'm gonna increase the resolution a bit, clean that out. Um, so the way that I would approach something like that would be just with mask and um, the gizmo and maybe the move brush. So I will take the lasso, the mask lasso, and just hold control and basically try to target areas based on the on the flow, like I said. So with this along the lines of the planes, basically. So this is this is one of them, and maybe that one is another one. And this this first mask is. I think it looks good. And then what I can do is go ahead and invert the mask. We can go to, I have everything into my custom uh, Wacom. I'm using the Cintiq. So in, I have in my Wacom, I can just do all that from here, but for you guys, it should be under the masking palette. So I'm gonna go to sharpen, and that sharpens the, the edge of the mask. And then I can bring in, um, maybe not in this case, uh, but again, you can use the, the move sorry, the, the gizmo to, you know, reposition these bits and that creates that kind of gap. Uh, but I'm gonna do it a little bit more thoroughly than that. So I'm gonna bring in a move brush, make sure that, hang on a second, make sure that AccuCurve is enabled so that we have a very sharp, a pointy way to push this. And I'm just gonna manually push this out like so. And remember that at this point, we're just blocking, blocking stuff, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Right, and let's go ahead and clear that out. And now we have that little gap. Let's go ahead and do the same thing around there. Right, sharpen. Maybe in this case, I'm gonna invert it, and instead of pushing out, I'm gonna pull this in, in and up a bit. Right, so that sort of thing, that's the idea with this this part of this step. Um, um, Slow Wizard, hey, what's up, how's it going? Just found the, the channel. 
you mean the pixel logic serious life if you if this is the first time you get into these uh, serious life you're in for a treat I mean not just not this one in particular I'm just saying if you just found the, the channel there's some amazing people here doing streaming for serious life um, okay I'm gonna sharpen that in maybe, maybe not embedded I'm gonna increase the size of my brush and then just push that out all right so this is what I mean about being careful on how on in which areas to apply this effect because if you do them very you know if I take my uh, one second what is going on configure restore custom UI ah there we go so if you take the damn standard brush and do which you can and do this type of things to set up a more interesting rock then when you when you take this and multiply it many times and, and create the environment this pattern here is going to be very easy to recognize everywhere so it's going to be like oh yeah this is just uh, the same <laughs> so that's why I'm trying to be a little bit careful where I place these so they're not all over the place and they kind of like make sense um, with the rest of the rock so I'm probably going to do one more here so with the, again with the mask lasso I'm going to mask along the line along the way of this kind of line and I'm just going to mask this as well right and sharpen that bring in my move with AccuCurve and probably I mean I'm, I think it makes sense to push this part out And like I said, if I was to actually sculpt a rock, um, and I think that's what um, Nesumi was uh, was talking about, the anatomy of the rocks, there's no way to go wrong, uh, which is true. But if I were to do a, a rock, I would be more careful about where I place this so that it makes more sense. Um, generally speaking, the type of rock that I'm doing, it has more of the smaller details towards the bottom because they probably like the sediment and um, how the the water at some point eroded that part and then at the top is is a, is a bit flatter and bigger shapes so I would I would focus on that uh, those type of details that anatomy of the rock um, a little bit more but like I said in this case we're building an asset more than anything um, you don't have to use just the move brush you can very easily go to what we've been using the trim adaptive with the alpha right and with the masking um, that allows you to, you know, keep building volumes in areas that, you know, otherwise might have been a little bit hard to create this type of, you know, this type of areas. I'm gonna leave this one here, and I'll show you another another process that you can that you can use. All right, I'm gonna clear the mask. I'm gonna reduce my brush size. I'm gonna push this in. Maybe redynamize really quickly. All right, I'm not going to spend too much time on this rock, to be honest. This is just a proof of concept. If it doesn't work, uh, if it works, I'll probably just replace the the asset that I'm going to create with a better rock. <laughs> um, shouldn't take too long. All right, so I'm gonna redynamish again, and I'm gonna switch to the trim dynamic. So we've been using the, the trim adaptive. So now with the trim dynamic, actually let me undo that, and I'm gonna increase my dynamic resolution. So we have quite a bit of polygons now to play around with. And with this trim dynamic, make sure I have the square alpha. I'm just going to clean up some of the, the planes. And that's what I mentioned about, I think it was this detail here. Right? We can just go ahead and do this. So, sort of like tone it down a bit. All right. 
so I'm just gonna target some of the the areas that might look a little bit too organic as in not too organic sorry too too soft um, and that softness that doesn't really go with the with the sharp lines and the angles that we're trying to create with this rock this type of rock and this type of like jagged edges that are created with the with the move brush just because we had a, a low resolution mesh um, just be careful with those so that they're not very obvious but uh, we're gonna do another pass to sort of like refine or highlight those those lines in just a bit just wanna finish with the with the trim dynamic um, another thing or another trick that you can use instead of using the trim dynamic um, I prefer to do it manually but another trick would be to just do a clay polish so we might do that as well and the clay polish will maintain some of these nice edges while polishing the rest or, or creating more easily recognizable planes I guess that's the that's a good way to put it all right but I'm gonna I'm gonna move a little bit faster because it is it is kind of boring to <laughs> just to see a another yet another rock being created <laughs> in zeros in a stream so um, but we need it we need it as an asset so that we can create the rest and the more fun part of the stream so I'll I'll leave it there in terms of this step and maybe a little bit more <laughs> actually It might not, yeah. It might it might be boring to watch, but it's if you want to do some practice with brushes or you know shapes and or try to replicate something, it is very fun to just do rocks for some reason. I find very very interesting and relaxing. All right, so I'm gonna leave this one as it is in in this in this step. So that um, the fixing of the planes with the trim dynamic, and I'm gonna go to. Um, not the damn standard brush, I'm going to use a different one. So I'm going to use the slash brush. Um, so let's filter by, I think it's with three. So S3, S, and then the number three. No, nope. uh, where is it? Oh yeah, yeah, number three. So slash three. So I just click on that one. Um, the shortcut will be BS3 uh, in your keyboard. And this is kind of like a damp standard brush, but it's, it's really, really strong, the effect. And it's very, very good to create this type of crevices. So that type of stuff. Um, you can also add a different alpha, but I just found this one works fine. And this is probably some of you guys um, maybe didn't, didn't catch that at the beginning of the stream, but uh, we're talking about the trails. Uh, maybe this is a good brush that you can add trails to make it even more easy to control and increase the effect. So all I'm doing here is just try to set some 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 marks that make sense, kind of like where the the pieces of rock break apart. But again, I'm not trying to make something. I'm not copying a rock, and I'm trying to keep everything fairly generic so that we can reuse it from multiple angles. That is the key here. Not just trying to make a, a rock. And by the way, you can totally do these with the damp standard brush. Just wanted to you know show you a, a different a different type of brush that is really useful. So for example, this line here, you'll see, I'm gonna leave it because I really wanna show you what, I, what I've been talking about, the making feature details. So if you look at this from this angle and then you'll see the same repeated asset multiple times, this is gonna be very easy to recognize that that's the same, unless we you know, cover it up with other stuff. But I'm gonna leave it there so that you can see 
what I mean by that. And I'm just going to highlight or not highlight, sort of reinforce those uh, feature planes or feature lines that we created with the with the masking. Okay. I think we're pretty good to go, maybe this one as well. All right, I think I think we have we have covered some of the main ones. I mean, this one is quite prominent as well, this detail here. So let's see if I can just add maybe another one coming down here. I'm kind of like going away from that generic rock that I mentioned that I wanted to create, but you know, we'll see, we'll see how we go. All right, um, maybe another one. <laughs> this is the thing with the rocks, like, um, especially right now that I'm, I have a few reference, but it's not, you know, it's not, um, it's not a specific brush, it's not a specific rock that I'm doing. So whenever I see something, I said, oh, let's just add the details here and stuff like that. So I want to try to, <laughs> to stay away from that. Um, all right, so I'm going to do a quick save. Uh, the next part that you can do is just use a clay polish and for you guys should be under the clay polish makes sense uh, sub palette so pay attention to what happens around the maybe the borders so you see everything gets uh, kind of like more stylized which is a thing that I really like so I'm gonna undo that so you can see the difference it clears up a little bit of those details and th those crevices but it maintains some of the sharpness of it um, one of the things that I really like about the clay polish is that it uses the crevices and the and the sharp edges to mask everything. So essentially, once you run the clay polish, you will end up with a mask, right? So if I invert that mask, right now, ZBrush, it's hard to see here, but all of these crevices are being masked out. No, sorry, masked out. Yeah, masked out. <laughs> so in a way, all I've done here is just run the clay polish and before I clear the mask and do anything else, I inverted the mask, and this is the type of mask that the clay polish gives me. Now, what's good about this is I can just go ahead, go to the view mask, oh, sorry, to the masking palette, click view mask. So the mask is still there, but I'm just turning and toggling on and on so that I can see what I'm going to do. I'm gonna just switch it off, but it's still the mask is there. I'm just not being able to see it, the darker color. And I'm gonna bring in um, inflate for you guys should be on the deformation palette and I'm gonna instead of inflating those details because we have unmasked the crevices I'm gonna deflate it so that it creates more of those you know interesting patterns in a rock so using the inflate instead of pushing it up or to the right I'm gonna deflate it so you'll see this is the type of stuff that we can do almost for free <laughs> just using the clay polish Right, so that is that is quite good. Um, another thing is with the same, you know, with the same um, mask without without getting rid of the mask, we can go ahead and polish some of these these lines with the clay polish, or you can use the H polish, anything that you want. And the good thing is that, uh, sorry, let's invert the mask actually. So yeah, invert the mask. So that way. Zbrush protects the crevices, so I'm gonna do this really quickly. You'll see I'm, pr I'm putting a lot of pressure here, but Zbrush protects those crevices that we just created. So I'm, go I'm gonna undo that and then just very quickly resharpen those those areas. And that also helps us to um, create some variation in terms of the of the of how deep those crevices and those details um, are, because the inflate slider just applies 
uh, a global kind of effect or or the the pressure not the pressure the the effect is going to be um uniform across the the entire set of mask or unmask details so just by doing this little extra pass of cleaning things up with the clay uh sorry the trim dynamic it sort of ensures that it it looks a little bit more realistic in a way or more organic and that is just that's just an extra thing that you can do just to make it look more believable i guess um but again those are very simple ways to create uh, a rock or uh, details and again i'm going to clear the mask and you can spend as much time cleaning this up or or figuring out what to do here uh, what I'll do is I'll see what another clay polish gives me. It's pretty decent. I think that looks pretty cool. And we have an interesting mask as well that we can keep pushing. So for instance, these details around here, this is kind of like a crackling mask. Uh, I'm, I can invert that, right? And I can sharpen it a bit. Let's see what that gives us. Uh, the sharpen get rid, gets rid of some of the Let's just undo that. Uh, but with this, we can go with a move brush and then just create some more feature-like parts. So I'm gonna hold the Alt key to push in with the move brush, right? And that that is just, you know, I haven't done anything weird or, you know, alphas or anything like that. I'm just using the same, the same process that I've been using with the clay brush. And now that I have that mask, I'm just pushing in certain details to, to add details really without any mask or, or any, any alpha, really. Just, uh, just taking advantage of what we already did. Um, not only that, we can invert the, the mask and we can push things out a bit as well. So it works both ways. So you'll see that something, um, yeah, something to keep in mind is that the the sharpness of the I cleared the mask by the way uh, the sharpness of the details that we've been creating uh, now it feels a little bit more blobby uh, but that's that's fine um, I think it works for what we're doing uh, but if you want to have a more sharp set of edges uh, we can go with the clay polish that will respect more of those sharp edges and then just you know clean that up as well so the a polish is you know, a fantastic tool for many things. Um, a lot of people that are into hard surface model, hard surface modeling, uh, use it quite a bit. And I personally, when I have to do any hard surface stuff, that's my go-to brush. Although I don't do much, but yeah, that's my go-to brush to do that type of hard surface details. Um, but it's also a great polishing brush, just as a polish brush, because it would respect the the plane or the norm it will respect the plane base on the normal from the point that you clicked so for instance if i wanted to just polish this entire plane here i can just click here start polishing and i can hold control while i do this and see so it's going to respect kind of like the the difference in an, in an angle so i still have to be careful of how to apply it but i'm putting a lot of pressure here holding control and you see the difference in angle here it sort of keeps this other plane fairly, fairly clean. This one sort of went over just because they're almost at the same normal orientation. I'm gonna undo that because I don't want it, but I just wanted to show you that's a, it's a fantastic tool for that type of stuff. Okay, so I think we can move on now. We created an asset, um, fairly detailed. We can do more details. Actually, let me show you another trick or another, not trick, another process that you can apply to your rocks <laughs> as if you were making rocks all the time but if you were um, this is another trick that you can add more details to it uh, and that's just with the surface noise add a little bit of noise so you can do two things you can add noise with the noise brush I don't know if you're familiar with that um, something that I don't use often but it's, it's super handy for this type of thing so here the noise brush is basically um, a brush that allows you to apply noise just in certain areas. So in this case, I don't think it's gonna give me the, the effect that I want. Plus this type of rock is not, the porosity of it is not as prominent. So uh, anyway, just wanted to show you it's in there. 
but instead what I'll do is I'm going to go to surface and I'll check the chat if you guys have any questions in just a second but uh, on the surface I can turn the noise on and you get this little plug-in window and here I'm just going to scale my noise so that I can see more of it uh, let's scale it up quite a bit and then we can just tweak it and the strength would just change how much uh, the influence of that noise so this is kind of like a way to overall give it more um, surface noise obviously um, but just you know increase the roughness of the overall surface you can do that uh, but what I find really really useful is to play around with these values so I can just play with this with this curve and create some nice sharp indentations uh, if you want to create points that are really sharp you'll see that with this curve I'm only get creating these pores in the um, in the rock so if you want to get sharp points just click on the point that you want and take it out of the this little window with the with the curve and then push it back in without letting go of the of the click so click outside bring it back in and if you want to make it no sharp or unsharpen it you can click outside bring it back in but you know I like the, the sharpness of this for this case so I'm gonna play around with that just playing with a curve that I think looks good and then we can just rethink the size of the noise um, and I think we can just flip it let's see hmm or maybe just change the strength so the details some of the details are pushing out instead of in all right so I think I mean I can play with this for a long time until I get something that I find useful but just for the sake of moving on I'm gonna click OK um, here and then here is the details of the rock so it, it looks fairly um, fairly detailed just with those those two techniques that I just show you uh, but the the good thing is that the surface noise is just a, a preview so I haven't applied it to the to the mesh and this is really good because you can uh, we can simplify this rock quite a bit and have it kind of like a low poly and then on top of that add the noise so I don't know if I should if I want to keep the noise um, or if it's something that I can add later on when I have all the rocks and I can apply it uni uniformly around all of the rocks and that might be a good idea to break apart the the obvious repetition of the rock or the obvious pattern that the single rock is going to create so I'm going to turn it off uh, for the time being I'm not going to get into too many details if I were to do it manually just for the sake of showing you um, another workflow I would use some of the brushes that I that I already um, have set up for this uh, so for example this quick cliff builder it allows you to with a single brush stroke create a bunch of details that are very more more intricate um, they won't work for this type of rock but as a cliff it's just to make kind of like cliffs cliff edges so it has um, a set of settings and, and an alpha that uh, builds up patterns like so very quickly so it's useful for those to those type of cliff rocks I guess um, so just to show you a, a different way to approach the detailing of this uh, rock um, another one that I use quite often um, depending on what you want to do this this one is interesting it just you know adds a bunch of random rocks around like that and then I would just go with the trim dynamic and clean it up or with one of the, the polishing brushes from the pack so you get all of these you know crevices and you know uh, this is very very quick but you get the idea alright so what I need to do now in order to make this into a, an environment or a usable asset for the environment is to simplify it so that we can create a uh, an insert mesh that we can use and manually place in different areas let me see if there's any questions in the chat. Um, my hey, what's up? 
Hey Pablo, I just want to know why you took out the three video series. I'm going to watch the third video, the comic outline for PBR. Um, you're going to post them somewhere else soon. Um, yeah, so those, mine's referring to a kind of like a master class that I did with a, a video series. I took it out because they were relevant to the course and the course is closed, but I will put them um, back on um, soonish. I don't know when. And yeah, and the idea is that they're part of the, it's, it's, it's part of the introduction to what the course is, but then um, the course is closed, the, and I'm referring to the extra mile. So when I open the, the enrollment for the course, the extra mile, uh, I would definitely let you know, or I'll put it, um, I'm sure you are part of the, um, the email list, so I'll send you an email about that. Sandros, okay, that's cool. Um, Oikram. 180. Hola Pablo, saludos de España. Hola, España. So you guys are probably what, three, three o'clock in the morning or something. Oh, how 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 late is it in Spain? Um, all right. So I'm gonna simplify this because if I see the mesh, it is quite dense for a insert mesh. So a simple thing I want to do is duplicate, and you've seen you see me doing this quite a bit in the in the past just because I like to keep the originals uh, for some reason <laughs> so I'm gonna create a folder call it OR that's how I name it the originals and I just keep that there and then I'm gonna use this one to do whatever I want and if I screw up <laughs> or something I just go back to the original so with this one I'm going to turn on the polyframe but I'm gonna turn off fill and select the, sh uh, the skin, the skin shade 4 um, and the only reason I do that is so I can see a, a, a obvious reason, a obvious difference and show you guys the difference between this mesh and what I'm going to do, which is using the decimation master. So in the C plugin palette, I'm going to dock it here to the right. I'm going to open up the decimation master and I'm going to pre-process current. So pre-process current means that ZBrush is going to analyze what I currently have uh, so that it, you know, ZBrush understands the volumes and where are the details and all that. And then I can just tell Zbrush once I pre-process the current subtool, I can say, you know what, I wanna, you know, um, decimate it by five percent, right? So I'm gonna get five percent. Sorry, I'm gonna get ninety-five percent less of the geometry that I have here. So to five percent, um, the amount of geometry that I have here. And let's go ahead and click decimate current, and you'll see Zbrush simplify the geometry from. I don't know what I had, so let me undo that. 251,000, and let's do decimate, to 12,000. So that's that's a, a big a big change, and this is more manageable for ZBrush to use as an insert brush, because an insert brush will insert the amount of polygons that you have in your insert brush. So in this case, if I was, was to leave it, if, if I was to just use the previous one, then I will be, every time that I click to insert, I will be inserting 250,000 polygons. Uh, this is still a little bit dense, but it will do the trick. And you'll see, although we have way less polygons, it is still keeps uh, most of the of the major details. And this is the reason why I didn't want to apply or use the noisemaker. Um, the good thing about the noisemaker, again, is now that I have this simplified geometry, I can still go to the noisemaker. I'll have to do it again, because this is a different subtool, but I can apply the noise. Oh no, I didn't. So that's cool. Right, so with a very simple mesh, I can still use the, the noise maker to create these details, which I'm not going to do uh, right now. Cool, so this is what we have. Now let's go ahead and create a multi-insert brush out of a single asset that we can use and reuse in many different ways. Um, and it's gonna be very, very helpful. Um, one, one, one. How you doing? Uh, can you apply different noises on different layers and combine them by the after after by mask? Absolutely. Uh, you you just need to make sure you have enough geometry so that um, I mean you cannot have noise preview like this one in different layers. So you have to apply the mesh. Uh, sorry, apply the noise to the mesh in a layer. So if I want to combine this with a different noise maker, I will just have to create a new layer 
then apply the noise the noise to the mesh and then create another one and another noise another layer then another noise apply it and so on and so forth so that you can mix and, and match um, the the reason I cannot do that right now is because I need more resolution in order to apply this mesh or I don't need it but in order to see the details I will have to I'll just show you so if I pl apply to mesh this is what it does it just distorts the the geometry a little bit right so now the maze the the mesh is distorted by the noise but is all the details that the preview gives you are not there so I'm gonna undo that turn it off uh, but you can totally do that with the with the layers uh, another good tool if again this doesn't have to do with I mean it's just another workflow but uh, you can save a morph target let, let me just show you store a morph target go into the surface noise let's say apply this noise right um, in a layer as well you can do that and then go to the morph brush and then you can go back to the previous state so you can just reduce some of the the effect that you created here with the noise which is actually not too bad I don't I don't mind this um, what the noise maker gave me this this uh, in this step it's not too bad um, but again you can just use the, the morph brush to simplify it after you apply the noise uh, and then you can just switch back between before and after so I think is give is giving us some some nice alterations so that's good <laughs> I'm gonna leave it like that I'm gonna delete morph target um, and move on all right I don't understand how to erase some parts of the of one layer without affecting different like in Photoshop no you cannot it's not that's not how the layers work in zero you can do it if um, you can do it if you save a morph target, right? Um, so you can apply a noise maker effect into a layer with a morph target. So you save a morph target and then you create a new layer to apply them the noise, and that way you can control the intensity of the effect with the layer. Uh, but then you can also erase in a way uh, with the morph target, like I just showed you here. Uh, but once you do that, if you want to do do it another time or you want to have another layer with other noise you'll have to delete that morph target create a new one create a new layer apply the new no noise and then use that so it's more um, it's, it's, it's more destructive in in that sense the, the, the workflow but that's just the nature of the of the layers in, in, in ZBrush um, it's not it's not they're not layers <laughs> in, in Photoshop they're very different in, in the way that they work so it's hard to I know I know what you mean in terms of what you want to achieve, um, but it's not it's not possible. Okay, so I'm going to just make sure they have the right one. Uh, I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna create an insert mesh. So the way that we create insert meshes is you know very easy. I'm gonna find the angle that I that I want to insert this um, this mesh from. So I think that one is a good one. So when I drag it into the nest, into the mesh that I'm going to use, it's going to be from this angle. I'm going to click Insert Mesh. So in the Brush Palette or Brush Thumbnail, create Insert Mesh and create New. And now we have a single mesh as part of the as part of this um, brush. So all I need to do now is start clicking and dragging right and that creates my rocks which is pretty cool and in fact you can just go ahead and start with a very simple rock and then do what I'm just doing here just inserting a few more rocks and this is a new rock that you can create um, a new asset that you can put into your into your brush so I'm gonna undo that because that's not what I'm trying to do or at least not at this stage um, so I have this one again um, we can play around with the uh, how in-depth you are pushing this in uh, but we'll do that in in just a second and uh, what I want to do is using the same asset producing multiple views so that when we insert it it's gonna basically randomly change the look and feel of the rock so I'm going to rotate so this is a different angle do the same thing click on the brush thumbnail 
and instead of creating a new instrument mesh, I'm just going to attach it to the current one. So let's click on, no, actually, I'm going to attach it. So create insert mesh, right? So that gives you this pop-up saying, do you want to create a new brush or you want to append the current one or the current mesh that you have on the, on, on the canvas to the current um, brush, which is the one that we created before. So I'm going to append that. And it's going to give you this other pop-up saying, um, when you have multi-insert multi meshes, you can press M to, to access them. I uh, already know that, so I'm going to skip that till the next time. And now we have the two brushes. So this is really good because I can select that one and bring these details here. Then I can select the other one, push that in. And essentially, they look like two different rocks. And all I did was, uh, because it's a very organic model, is just create insert brushes from different angles. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to undo that. Let's do another angle. So this one is going to be pretty cool. It's going to move a little bit faster. Append here. Let's do that one as well. Append. So now we have four different angles. And then we can just do, you know, something slightly different, just a, a little bit from the top. Append, maybe from the bottom. And uh, maybe one that is kind of like that, sort of angled a bit. And I'm going to do one more. All right, so I have uh, eight different, different rocks. So they're not different, it's exactly the same rock, but when you insert them, because the, the angle of insertion is going to be different for each one of those, and we haven't played with the insertion, the, the, the deepness of the insertion, um, that is going to create a, a very random, very unique look that it doesn't look uh, repetitive. And that's why I wanted to keep everything in terms of these details and crevices fairly generic and fairly simple. Alrighty. Um, what else? What else I was planning to do? Oh, another thing that you can do is, you know, once you have this asset, you can simply bring in the gizmo, you know, squash this thing like that, and create a different rock. So, so this little one might be useful for the for the ground or other parts. So I'm going to create um, a pen, and I'll, I'll do the same the same thing. Some areas are going to look stretched, but you know, these are the type of thing that we can take care of later on when we have more more details. All right, so in the same brush, we have eight different large brushes, and we have these three other smaller brushes. Um, and another thing we can do, maybe, I'm just going to squish this even more. Rotate it, and, and we can just polish it, or maybe do a clay polish. See what that gives us. Polish it a bit more. So I'm just destroying basically what we did and then using the clay brush to sharpen those details. Um, maybe bring in the trim dynamic. And remember, I'm, I'm applying these effects on a, on a mesh that doesn't have as much resolution or as many polygons. So this is just going to be kind of like a tiny pebble that we can add to the ground or, or something like that. So it's going to be tiny. And in fact, because it's going to be tiny, we have probably a lot of resolution here. So let's just jump back to the decimation master. I'm going to pre-process and decimate current. So now this is very tiny, only 628 polygons or points. Uh, and that's going to be pretty good. Let's go back to our brush with rocks and do the same thing. Append. So this is going to be the tiny one. So all I'm doing again is just three different shapes so far and inserting them from different angles. So now I have one, two, three, maybe do another one of these from the top maybe. Cool. Um, so I'm going to do a quick save and I'm going to save this. Uh, actually, before I save this brush, um, I'm going to do a little icon. So in case you didn't know, I mean, if you don't know how to make an icon, that's going to be probably a good idea. 
Um, so using this as my base mesh to insert the rocks, I'm just going to click on one of my rocks, push it in. Oh, by the way, something else that we can do at this point before we save it. You know what? Let me save it just in case. Just in case, I'm going to put it here in the stream. OK. So I'm just going to save it just in case, but I'm, I'm going to override it in just a second. So you can select every single piece. And depending on which one you select, this um, how deep you insert the, the mesh is is kind of like independent from other other meshes that you're inserting. So in other words, it's it's um, on a pair mesh basis. So if you go to let's get rid of that. Let's go to brush. And how are we with time? I think 15 minutes. Yeah, that's all right. I think we have time to do this. Set the 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 brush and and set up the first pass for the environment. Cool. So let's go ahead and. Here in the brush palette, click on the depth, and this is the same. This is the same icon that I have here. So what this allows you to do is select one of the meshes, and I'm gonna push this in. And when I drag it, you see that the the point of insertion is way lower. So in other words, this allows you to um, determine how close to the surface you are inserting the mesh. Uh, if you let me undo that, if you push this all the way up. When you insert it, it's, it's almost like these meshes are not touching. Uh, so this is a, an interesting way to, like for example, if you have a character that has some floating particles and things like that, you can use this to just insert those particles in a way that are like away from the mesh, so not connected. Um, yeah, so that's just another way. And if you push it all the way down, it's just going to be very hard to see, like so. Uh, which is a it's a good technique to to uh, to create a, an, an uneven ground. Uh, we might use that later on. But just to completely uh, to complete the the creation of this brush, I'm just going to set it around there. I think that's fine. And you'll see if I change to a different rock, then this changes. So that's what I'm saying. You can play around with the with different depth for all of them. So I'm going to do this very quickly, and all I'm doing is inserting one, checking that the depth is all right, and undo that. Do the same thing with the next one. And all of these changes that you're making are going to be saved. This one, this one is a tricky one. I think it works. Let's leave it there. Now, all those changes that you're making to each one of these uh, rocks within this depth are going to be saved with the, with the brush. So you don't have to do this every time. I'm going to push this one a little bit in. So these tiny, the smaller rocks, I'm going to make sure that quite embedded. And they're going to be good to, uh, to create variations in the ground. Yep. Let's push these ones. Uh, these are the, the smaller pebbles. Not pebbles, but little, little rocks. That's fine. Cool. So I completed with that. Uh, by the way, if you wanted to to create, uh, you know, to to name these, uh, you can just do it from the. Uh, I think you will have to name the sub tool before you create the the insert brush. Uh, but I think, yeah, no, there's no there's no way to do it. Um, anyway, that's not it's not important at all, at all not relevant. So let's create the little icon because that's going to be useful. So I'm going to click on a couple of these meshes so that I know what type of brush this is. And this is essentially what we're going to do um, in a bit with the with the crown and, and the rest of the of the environment. But what I want to do here is just create a little blob of rocks uh, that showcase some of the rocks that I have in my brush, so that I can, uh, when I save it, I will know. Okay, this is the, this is this brush. Okay, so this is going to be my icon, and the way that you create an icon again is very simple. Uh, one thing I want to do is change to the toy plastic. Uh, for some reason, 
the toy plastic is the probably one of the best materials to so that you can see enough contrast in the in the icon. Um, if not, you can use the, the skin shade four. But let's just go with that one. And to create a an icon uh, from the brush palette, just make sure that you have obviously your brush selected. Uh, press the Alt key, and holding the Alt key, just click select icon, and that's it. That creates our icon, like you see here. Uh, we can change to a different material. See if that changes anything. Um, maybe the the basic the <laughs> basic the basic one is is more telling of all the different shapes. I don't know. Just just play around with the materials. You can even choose a matcap, but Sirius is gonna give you a black and white or grayscale image. Uh, I'm just trying to find something that has enough information to read the volumes in this tiny little icon. So I think this one works. Um, you can also go to Photoshop and create a square image and click on select icon actually without alt and import your own custom icon. That's another way to do it. Let's see, let's see how we're going. Um, it's not possible yet, how we add it in the future. Cool, um, thank you, morning, morning all. Hey Warren, um, Morphe up time and Pixelogy has been, oh, okay. Is that like, um, um, what's the name? Like a little command to, to figure that out? Like if you put uptime, like exclamation mark uptime, you get the automated bot telling you how long it's been? That's a cool feature, I didn't know. That's something you can do. Nice, 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 nice. All right. Um, okay, okay, where, where were we? Okay, we have our brush. Uh, we have tweaked the brush. I'm gonna save that as a, you know, a replacement of the one that we created. I'm gonna give it a name actually. Let's call it Rocks. Uh, rocks zero three. Because I had. Ah, let's just call it Rocks. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Uh, so that changes that. Uh, you can also, um, if you were to, for example, create a set of brushes and then you want to share them with share them with people, uh, you can edit the. Uh, kind of like the copyright of your brush, and that is here from the create, the create um, palette. Just click on edit brush credits, and you can just put your name and a link to your website. So that's what I do with my brushes pack. So if you, if you're familiar with the with the brushes that I share online, um, the paid packs or the mostly the free ones that I have, they all have my name and the and the link to get more, and that's just a, a good way to. If if people find useful uh, your brushes useful, they, it's a good reference to okay. Here's where I can go and, and get more of those or, or learn more about it. So that's just a you know added thing. <laughs> it's not not relevant to this. Okay, so now that we have the brush, let's go to say uh, we had the circle that we created at the beginning, this one, and this is our base plane. All right, so. What I want to do is create kind of like a, like a passage. So let's say if I put this one here, it's gonna see the screen so that I can show you. You can see it there probably. Okay. So I'm gonna use this this tool here to to draw an idea of what I want to go for. So you, you you know what I'm doing and it's not randomly placing stuff. Um, let's say if I want to put the the camera from from this angle, right? Like looking from this angle, I want to create a kind of um, like a passage. So all of these will be rocks, like big rocks, like that. Um, maybe some smaller ones here. So this area will be non not covered by rocks. It's going to be the passage kind of thing. Um, these ones are going to be fairly Tall and yeah, that kind of thing. And then we can use smaller ones to, you know, add some details around here. So this is my my thinking of what I want to do. Uh, and then maybe just to make it interesting, we can make kind of like a weird river. Uh, actually, not a river. Let's just, or well maybe I don't know. Um, maybe we can do some kind of weird pattern here, like a rock pattern, something like like a circular thing. Oh, this is going to be interesting. 
it's, it's an interesting technique. I can show you something uh, cool if we do something like that. Um, and then, yeah, just place more details here. And yeah, we can use these to, to create some kind of like river or like flow of water that goes underneath the, the earth or something. Uh, but essentially, if you were look, looking at this from this camera, what you will see is just a passage of like these big rocks uh, on each side, maybe. Uh, but the advantage of doing it this way and in ZBrush, obviously, is that then we can just change the camera angle and change the, the depth and the angle of view and, and figure out the best way to create this concept. So that's going to be uh, an interesting one. Uh, what's the what's the app that you use to draw on the screen? Little pen icon. Here we go. It's the Epic Pen. <laughs> that's the that's the most uh, asked question in the stream. <laughs> it's called Epic Pen. It's a free app, really cool, and allows you to. I have the the paid one, but it's free. Um, the difference is that you don't have uh, certain things, but I don't think you're ever gonna need them really. Uh, I I I use this one because of. Um, some of the classes that I do with my students, it's easy for me to just select, you know, a color and then go into this mode, which is like a black board, right? So don't worry, the stream is still there, but I can just show you uh, this this type of stuff, uh, fairly simple. Um, I don't know if that was captured in the stream, but yeah, um, that's what I can do with this with the paid version. Epic Pen, <laughs> it's free and it's pretty cool. All right. Um, put a couple of statues on the top of those rocks. They, yeah, that might be that might be something I can do. Um, maybe I can use the, the the totem, the pinhead guy that I created uh, for the the cheat sheet guide. The um, I'm sure you know. I like I'm I think you're familiar with it. Uh, let me just bring it up so that I can refer to because that's that could be a good uh, a good thing uh, just to add those details, uh, let's see. Cool, so if you go to tutorials, uh, actually if you go to the, well, it's in tutorials, but if you go to the Seabridge Guides website, you'll see it in the in the news, because it's still there. Um, so is this one here, the cheat sheet for compositing. Uh, by the way, this if you haven't seen it, this um, this is another guide that I created after a, a series of, I think, three streams where we created this, this gun, this alien gun. Um, and this is a guide that shows you, it's a video tutorial that shows how to finish that up into, you know, um, in Keyshot with the uh, textures and materials and all that. So if you're interested, but anyway, the one that I was talking about is this one, the cheat sheet for compositing, and it's this one here. And you can just download it, it's a free PDF. Uh, and it's basically my my seven steps to to get a a polished kind of like illustration based on a zero render. Um, the the cool thing or the the reason I'm showing you this is because this is the character that I'm thinking. If anything, I can just simplify it and put it into this uh, into the environment, kind of like the head only or something like that. Like it's like oops, sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. If you're hearing, if you're um, using headphones, that might be a, a bit of a an annoying sound. <laughs> Sorry, uh, but what I'm thinking is that if you've seen that shot in um, Blade Runner, where he goes into the into that desert desert part where he meets I forgot his name. Anyway, you, you know what I'm talking about, like the the big heads in the sand. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. So something like this uh, might be an interesting way to, you know, add it to to the environment. Uh, but let's just let's get cracking. Um, let's go ahead, and I'm gonna turn off symmetry, and I'm gonna start with some of the big rocks. Now I'm gonna click on this, and I'm gonna click on this area. Click and drag. Maybe turn off polyframe and that just creates the first rock. Now the great thing about using insert brushes is that they will have a different polygroup when you insert them and also as soon as you insert them it will create a mask. So you can bring in do all these things and just change it around. So I'm gonna push this down a bit, make it a bit bigger, squash it a bit more. 
So I'm just setting up the kind of like what the what most of the rocks are going to be sitting. So that's one thing. Let's use another one here. And again, we can squash it a bit more. Let's do another one. So you'll you start to see how this this technique could be um, quite handy. And I'm 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 squashing them in this axis. I'm pushing it up just to create that first sort of like layer on the on the ground or, or towards the ground. Okay, let's do another one. And again, squash it up like that. So this is kind of like the two walls that I'm trying to create for the for this environment, um, and these are fairly fairly big. Um, in fact, something we can do is just add a a little human for reference in terms of the scale. So let's go ahead and do that really quickly before we move on, uh, so that we have a good reference of you know the scale of this scene and where the details should be and all that. So um, I think. The best way to do it. I mean, I have a few, a few references, but I'm just gonna take maybe just take Nick's Nick's average man, and that's a, a really good one. And I'm gonna take the just the body, and this one comes with some layers, so we can tweak the the arms. So I'm gonna push the arms down. And I'm gonna bake all and copy this mesh and let's go to our environment, frame that. Oh hang on, I think I have everything upside down. Um really? Hmm. Yeah, everything's upside down, so let me just fix that. No, it's not upside down, I was just placing it in the wrong Hmm, okay. One second. So I'm gonna isolate this. And then just push this, oh sorry, rotate this. There we go. I think, yeah, that's better. Um, all, all I did there was just flip and invert the, the placement of the rocks because the floor was underneath. Um, so now let's go ahead and paste the little human and let's move it in place. So I think maybe smaller than that would be good. So that's uh, a reference for the size of this environment. So I think that wouldn't be that one would be a good size. So we can see like these are the base the baselines of the of the rocks. Um, let's go ahead and move on now. So select the plane or the circle, and I'm gonna insert a few more here. Bring in the gizmo. Still setting up the the base at this point. Uh, you can hold Alt and reset the rotation of the gizmo without changing the rotation of the of the mesh. So I just did that, holding Alt. Alright, so that's just going to be something here. Piece of rocks and, and add more um, intricate patterns to this. So let's bring back, I think some of these ones are the ones that you can drag from the top, let's see which one. Let's start with that one. So I'm gonna click on this, drag that, 
and I kind of like the the angle of this one maybe rotate it a little bit so this becomes kind of like um, a process of designing really you already have the assets um, it becomes just concepting basically uh, and, and playing with the composition so I have an idea in mind already of what I what I want to create but you know it's uh, it's um it's a very very organic process you have the assets but you know you might you might see a different shape as you add these pieces or these rocks so you see something that looks more interesting and you just go for it and that's kind of like the beauty of it i'm just trying to create something interesting here um thinking about the transition of the rocks as well And this is also the reason why I I wanted to to sort of uh, create a, a low poly mesh or a, or a rock that is not very detailed um, because you know in setting all of these it's just adding to the count of visible poly groups uh, visible points um, quite rapidly. So this is this is going to be a prominent one, slightly bigger. And another thing that I'm trying to pay attention to is not to um, have very, you know, similar, similar uh, uh, details. So you'll see this detail here, right, is very easily recognizable in this rock, for example, in a way. It's not identical, and it's also here, and and that is just because we're using the same rock from different angles. But um, in this case, for example, instead of Keeping that one, can just rotate it and have a more interesting and more organic shape there. So that's one thing, right? So I think this is starting to look interesting. Let's just go ahead and add a couple more here, just to sort of close that, kind of like make a, a wall or close that gap. Uh, another thing you can do with this technique is um, instead of having to insert every single time because we have uh, an automatic mask, we can hold control and then just hold, holding control, move that up and that creates a duplicate of that. So, you know, I'm just going to change the angle a bit, flatting it on, on this one. And yeah, so this is the process. I mean, It might it might look complex when we finish, but you can see it's just it's just knowing a little bit of the the steps to get to this point, and then it's just having fun uh, organizing these these shapes, which is you know part of the deal. You spend a little bit of time and and therefore making a you know making something <laughs> that is not probably as fun like just a rock and a plane. <laughs> Um, yeah, once you have your assets and once you have your everything set up, you know this this is the this is the part that I really enjoy. It's almost like the sculpting the details. So you do the blocking and then you start playing around with details. Okay, I'm gonna do a few more of these big ones on this side. And you'll see that I'm not only inserting different ones or like different angles, but I'm also squashing them in different axes. And that's just to create more variety. So you don't have to create for this environment like a, <laughs> you know, 10 or I don't know, 20 different rocks. You can just have one <laughs> like we did. And, and then if it's working, again, this is kind of like a proof of concept, then you can go ahead and dynamize this entire thing and, and then spend time detailing it and making more more interesting especially once you figure out a an angle for the for the camera All right, so 
So this one, I think I'm gonna scale it in this axis. And I'm trying to, um, at, at the beginning, I thought I was just gonna make it, you know, flat going up in a way, uh, more vertical. Uh, but I kind of like this angle. I'm gonna rotate it 100 de 180 degrees because this one has a, a nice set of a nice set of details around here that I think will look good. And again, this is just the first pass of placing the we're blocking out the big shapes. So this is the the primary shape sort of, um, and then we just you using the same technique using the same brush even uh, we just add more details. So maybe here we can create a <clears throat> a bit of a of a gap between these. So I think that we're getting there. Uh, we can go ahead and do more just to to sort of cover certain areas. Uh, but this one we, we don't have to pay too much attention. This is just going to be, you know, it could be fairly distorted, uh, and this is just going to be kind of like a a wall for maybe the the light uh, that we can play around with later in in whatever software you want it could be Maya, Keyshot, whatever it is, or even ZBrush, obviously. All right, and we can maybe use the same one. Hold Control, click and drag, just chuck it on the other side. Maybe rotate it. Maybe scale it. Okay, so I think we are getting there. This looks interesting. Interesting enough to go to the next step, which is more kind of like the secondary forms still with this brush. So I'm going to clear that. And I'm going to do a quick save. See if any if any, of you, any of you guys have any questions before uh, we move on, um, but I think it's it's getting there. Um, Ethan Berlin, Ethan Berlin. It's another one that is. Um, what was the thing you used to make the human? Uh, I just copy and pasted another tool. I didn't make it. So that's uh, that's the humanoid from um, Nick Zuccarello. Uh, he's awesome. So he he has that. Uh, so it, it ships with ZBrush. You just go to the tools and find it. All I did was copy and paste it into the project uh, from Lightbox. Yes. So Lightbox tools, uh, the C tools, and it's in there. Just this one. <clears throat> so I use uh, Nick Nick Humanoid. Um, I'm just going to use your rocks collection I got a while back ago. Awesome. I save myself the hustle and straight into design. Is there a new collection soon? Um, n not of not of the rocks. I haven't done any any new thing with the rocks. Uh, there might be a new collection of brushes uh, coming up, but I'll still have to test a few things. But they're gonna be pretty cool, and I'm just gonna share uh, basically the the brushes that I've been sort of fine tuning and, and tweaking for a while now. Um, to work with fiber mesh, so they're my custom set of grooming brushes to work with dynam uh, with fiber mesh. So, uh, but it's nothing to do with the rocks. That the rock pack has almost like a hundred and something, uh, including VDMs. So that should keep you busy. Uh, I'm still pretty new to the whole process, so I was wondering if you want to paint these in substance paint in substance painter. What uh, would you have to would you have to retopo it? To create UVs before you paint it, um, yes. With the current workflow, yes, you have to. Yeah, you have to unwrap all of this in create the the UVs could be fairly, you know, depending on on what, depending on how. Depending on the end result, really. So basically, if it is just a quick um, concept and you just want to get the materials right and everything in Substance Painter, uh, a quick retopo or even just a Siri mesher projecting the details and then exporting it uh, for Substance Painter, that's more than fine. Uh, otherwise, 
you can just do polypane. Polypane is as good. Um, you can go into a lot of detail. Um, obviously, you don't have the ability to paint in different channels, which is uh, what substance painter is so good. But with uh, polypaint, you can achieve a really, really good result. Um, you probably weren't here when I showed the past uh, stream where we did the, the little monkey. And this is just polypaint. So let me show you. So this is just polypaint. So this is mostly ZBrush. The, the only thing that is not ZBrush in this case is the, the render, just because I wanted to do it in Marmoset and have the ability to play with more um, interesting lighting. But everything else is ZBrush. The, the fur is ZBrush, is low poly cards in ZBrush, the snow is ZBrush. Um, maybe here, I'll show you. So all of this is ZBrush, and this is part of the previous two streams um, where we did polypaint uh, and that sort of thing. Uh, I think we didn't do polypaint actually in this one, just for the eyes. But it's, you know, it's fairly simple and you can get very, very good results. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and um, we have about 15 minutes. I reckon we can uh, set up a few more rocks just to get this blocked out. Uh, and next stream, what we do is we start with the, uh, with the ground and I have a pretty cool technique to show you uh, how to create kind of like a more um, design pattern in the rocks. Like a, yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> just like a design pattern. I don't know how else to put it. Um, and I will show you that next time because it will take longer than the 15 minutes. So let's go ahead and start putting some more rocks. So what I'll do here is select this one, let's say whatever, doesn't really matter, and drag it. Maybe this one, it does matter, <laughs> not that one. Something that is more flat to the surface, like that one. Um, yeah, I think that one would work. Let's try this one out. Maybe that one. So I'm gonna push that in a little bit more, right? So now that I have the forms created like the, the main shapes. Um, if I go ahead and outline kind of like the primary forms, they're very, very easily to recognize, right? The silhouette at least, at least. So there's a little bit of detail here as well in between, you know, you could say this is also part of the primary forms. Um, so there's a, a little bit of details in terms of, well, there's a little bit of detail already in the primary forms, forms but I'm treating them as the whole thing is just primary, the first pass. So what I'm going, what I'm going to do with the next step is just add set, sort of like secondary forms into the mesh. So the important part is not to override the the primary shapes that I created already. So I'm gonna take um, these brushes and I'm gonna push this down and that way the, we add in those more uh, smaller shapes but they're more embedded into the primary shapes, if that makes sense. So we just started adding these rocks around these areas maybe, uh, but they're not gonna override these, these main lines. So hopefully that makes sense. It's probably better if I just show you so with that one selected, let's just drag that in. You'll see it's more embedded, but I think I wanna even push that even more, like so. So I can just go ahead and fine tune this like that. And you'll see, it's, I'm, I'm respecting the, the line. Maybe for you guys it's gonna be easier if I just change the material. Let me know if that's better to, it's easier to see it. So I'm trying to respect the same, the, the forms that we already created, but just adding a few more details. And you can still do the same thing, bring in the gizmo and then creation. Maybe let's do another one. So just testing the the how embedded this rock is going to be. Some of these you won't see it from this angle, but remember that I'm trying to set up everything so that I can play with the camera later. So you might not see it in one angle, but in this model as for a for a single key shot or a single shot, um, I'm building it in a way that I can 
take advantage of the fact that it's a ZBrush 3D model and, and play around with the different angles. Uh, another thing that I don't, I mean, it might be useful for this. I don't use it as much, but it's really, it's just a different technique. Um, is that if you hold, sorry, not if you hold, if you click and drag to create this, this, um, this rock, uh, without letting go of the click, if you come back to the initial point, Zbrush is going to sort of like, squash the rock. So I can just very quickly just do that. Uh, you can also hold, um, I think it's Shift. No, sorry, con uh, Control. If you hold Control, it just basically, um, let me just do that. So there are two different things. So the f let me just do it so it's <laughs> easy to understand. Click and drag, and then you come back without pressing anything, and it sort of squashes that rock automatically. So it just saves you maybe some time. I'm, I don't like this too much. It saves you some time. Uh, but the other thing that you can do is set the size of your brush. So let's make it a large brush like that. And then you can click and drag and press control. And see is going to constrain the size of the inserted mesh to the size of your brush. But holding control allows you to rotate that around. So it's just something else that you can do with that with that technique or with this technique. Um, let's create another one and push that in, maybe a bit more. But what I really like about this uh, process is that just by, you know, setting up a few assets, doesn't have to be extremely complex, uh, we can create a, a rather complex scene. Just changing the the embedded um, values of these of these rocks, and again, I'm just trying to target certain areas here at the bottom. Populate this area with the with the smaller ones as well. Just gonna do it on the other side. Um, something else that you can do at this point, just so that we can work a little bit a little bit easier, I'm gonna clear the mask, is to split things apart a little bit. So you have the main right hand side and the secondary, or uh, they're both mains, but you can have it right and the right hand side and the left hand side and the plane. Right now everything is together in one single mesh, so I reckon we can get it down to half and work a little bit faster and easier. So. I'm going to remember this has polygroups. Every time that we create a new insert, it has a different polygroup. Uh, so I'm going to hold Control and Shift on the ground, and I'm going to split hidden. So now we have the plane, the plane on its own, and then they have we have the different the two sides of the rocks. Um, I'm going to separate these two so that I can play with one side and then on the other. Uh, it might not be useful in your case, depending on if you're following alone um, what you're doing, but because this is kind of like a passage thing, it's fine. So control, shift, and select this. So now I have only this area, and I'm going to split hidden. Turn this off, and now we have everything separated. And, and now, because everything is in different subtools, Zbrush can handle more uh, polygons. So let's. I'm going to turn off this one so that we can continue refining these shapes in here. So I'm going to use this one, not that one. I forgot which one I was using. I think this one. Nope. That one. And using the Gizmo 3D just to refine that. And I think I'm going to have to wrap it up here, guys. It's already getting close. time um, and we can just you know continue from from this environment to life with a bold, a bunch more a, a lot a lot more of different techniques that I reckon are gonna be useful um, so yeah hopefully hopefully you found um, today's live stream interesting Again, I'm, I'm using these um, these live streams as well to practice and do things that I don't get to use. 
uh, like these type of environments and I really enjoy the the concepting of those so might as well take the take advantage of this chilling time that we have uh, to create this type of stuff um, so maybe what I'll do is just continue doing what I just showed you on the other side um, but I, I won't do anything other than what I already showed you so that you can you know follow along so next time uh, next week I'll, I will just have this other side uh, to the same level of detail as this one with the smaller pieces and then we can take it from there let's go ahead and do a quick render let's do a quick save before <laughs> and let's do a quick render so we get some shadows and things happening um, there we go so that's it that's it for today guys so I hope you found these techniques useful and uh, I mean it's, it's exciting to if you didn't know about this this stuff it's exciting to figure out ways that you can create um, scenes and, and stuff that are more complex or that you will see for example uh, on, on our station or whatever things that look a bit more complex and you think oh this is going to take ages if I wanted to do something like that um, but once you learn the process and and you sort of take it down to the basics uh, you can produce very complex things out of very very simple shapes and very simple uh, set of assets like in this case it's just a plane and a single rock really all that's all we we've done today all right. Um, um, let's see if there's any last-minute question. Uh, while we're on the topic, do you think Sirius will get faster and closer and closer relationship workflow with Marmoset, like like it has with Keyshot? Um, I think it already has a pretty decent workflow. Um, I'm, I'm not entirely sure what you mean the closer relationship. Maybe if you're referring to the kind of like a bridge between the two, um, that's something that probably can be done through scripting. I don't know. I'm, I'm not a, a coder, so I don't know. But it's it's fairly simple. Like you can just export an FBX and import it into Marmoset. It's just a bit more manual, but it's very simple. And um, you can do the polypaint and use Marmoset with uh, color data to to extract that polypaint. So you don't have to create uh, UVs, for example. Hopefully that that's what you're referring to. Awesome stream, cool, cool, Sandros. Glad you like it. Um, saludos, my uh, Jasmine Vital. Me ajuda, me ajuda a superar o Renan. Galera, galera do comentario. <laughs> I don't know what to, I think this is Portuguese. Um, I don't know who I don't know what they're saying. Uh, where can I find other of your brush serious tutorials and just getting into it? And it's just most amazing piece of software when you get to use the UI. Um, so Morak, you can go to the serious guides website. That is, uh, uh, let me just show you. Yeah, you can go to the serious guide website, and this is this is the the website that I that I maintain uh, with a few different stuff guides, tutorials, resources everything reviews um, and if you go to the tutorials page you can you, you have access to all of these uh, you can also subscribe to the newsletter and I let you know when new stuff comes up um, today actually I I'm going to send one uh, with a few things uh, but basically here you can just filter it so if you're a beginner these are all beginner series in different ways um, I don't know if you want just uh, something to do with hair and visual effects or illustrations or reference rendering so it's a it's fairly user friendly in a way um, and just go to the seabrushguides.com and yeah just go to tutorials that that should give you um, an, an access to all that um, just just a quick note um, this button right now the extra mile is is sending you to my course but it's closed at the moment and it's a course I can just show you really quickly if you click on it um, it's it's a course that we have um, we've been having a lot of fun with the students and the people that uh, sign up uh, for the course it's uh, it's basically taking you from everything from ZBrush all the way to 
um, Polish illustration. So it's just going that extra mile. So that's why they call this, the course is called the extra mile. So I'll take you from fundamentals of essential concepts, busting myths, and you know, basics, fundamentals, lighting, composition, all that, uh, all the way to sculpting, intro to rendering using Keyshot, uh, poly painting, texturing, then we go into UVs, uh, Substance Painter, this is uh, an in-depth module of Substance Painter, then uh, rendering Keyshot and Marmoset, and then composition, and that's it. So that's a kind of like a, a more in-depth process. So uh, I'm just letting you know because if you go to the Serious Guides and then you click on this one, it's kind of like pointless right now because there's no, you cannot enroll, it's closed at the moment but you can just go to the very bottom and you can leave your email here and once it's, once I open it um, I'll let you know. Uh, I'll probably do it later this year. I'm not entirely sure. Right now I'm just concentrating on, on helping the, the current set of, of students um, that are part of the course which are doing some fantastic work that I cannot wait until they finish so I can show you guys the, the stuff, the, 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 type, the type of stuff that they're doing. It's re really cool. Um, yeah, so here you can find all of that. Hopefully that gives you an idea. Um, cool. That's it. That's it for today, guys. Uh, have a good one. Enjoy your the rest of the week, and I'll see you next time. Next week, we're just going to continue working on this, this environment and make it look a little bit more interesting. Um, at this point, if you wanted to do some, just a, a final little um, thought. At this point, if you want to just do a concept to, to figure out where to put the rest of the elements, uh, you can just use one of the comic materials that you can get as well from um, the Serious Guides, and it's free again. So you can set the white background, you know, take an angle like this, do a render, and then you have a line work where you can just in Photoshop paint over or, or do whatever you want, uh, just to figure out how to continue working on that. But that's just a, you know, an extra thing. All right. So have a good one, guys, and I'll see you next time.